sage, great smells. A lot of wildlife over here too. We always see big muleys and a lot of geese, waterfowl. Sometimes chuckers will hear in the morning. Yeah, we, we started talking about it. Uh, I, was, I was with James Monteith from Joseph, Oregon down at a Republicans for Wilderness conference down in uh, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I think about 2001 or two. And uh, we were having a beer and we were talking about this very topic. You know, why aren't there pro hunting, uh, pro backcountry uh, groups out there, conservation groups, you know, pushing for more protection of backcountry lands, whether it be wilderness or keeping roadless intact or special management areas, conservation areas, etc. And uh, so we met March 20th and 21st of 2004 uh, at my place up in the South Cascades, kind of a, uh, around 2,000 feet, 2,500 feet elevation, but really nice winter range for deer and elk and a lot of turkeys. And, and so it was spring and so the turkeys were out and they were talking and um, so it was a great environment to be in, very, very uh, rural. And uh, one night, you know, Tim Lillibo, bless his heart, rest in peace, Tim. Uh, he built a fire, uh, lit up a stogie, uh, uh, poured a maker's mark and, and said, hey, I've got a fire going. <laughs> come on, you guys, quit, quit talking about politics and conservation and come over and enjoy the fire. And that's kind of where we all stood around and and you know really question ourselves can we do this you know can we put together a group uh, that would really be a first um, in terms of advocating for public lands protection and backcountry values um, and obviously built around hunting and fishing I, we all hunt and fish but we're conservationists because we hunt and fish and uh, tony heckard was a gem um, tony took on our 501c3 application which is uh, a government operation. It's IRS, uh, a lot of paperwork, uh, a lot of patience, and he fought his way through it and uh, got us our, our uh, uh, tax exempt status. Great grassroots advocates, boots on the ground folks that, that love the land. They know the land better than anybody. And, um, but you can get burnt out. And uh, I think we were at the crossroads of maybe losing some folks at the national board level just because they were getting tired. You can only do it for so long. And uh, so we started looking out at, at you know, more of a professional staff, uh, but still remaining, re retaining and remaining a grassroots, boots on the ground kind of outfit. And, um, and so we started looking at different grant organizations, trying to generate more membership interest, um, you know, growing, growing a, out of Oregon into the Pacific Northwest and then into the Rockies and southwestern part of the United States, California. And now we have members in 50 states, which is uh, pretty surprising. It's uh, pretty overwhelming, too. I was at the rendezvous in March and kind of looking out at everything and just kind of thinking, uh, no way, this, this couldn't have happened. Uh, you know, we've got a great executive director in Land Tawny and professional staff to support him and our mission. And I don't think we ever envisioned that we would get to that point. And in fact, most nonprofits that start out as volunteer organizations, volunteer driven, um, you know, after a certain period of time, they fade away and they don't exist. And we're still here after 10 years. So we're tickled about that, uh, proud of it, but hum humbled as well. I, I do, um, in particular with our staff, um, our growing network of chapters, uh, volunteers, and uh, you know we're across the United States and into British Columbia now in Canada. We're really tickled about that. It's a great country in Canada to uh, protect, great fish and wildlife habitat, and a lot of dedicated sportsmen and women there. Um, so yeah, it, it's we're, we're excited about it. Um, to keep going forward, we have to we have to get momentum and, and continue the momentum. It's not, you can't, can't sit back in conservation and and rest on, well, we got this ground protected, uh, we got this travel management area implemented, uh, you know, we restored this habitat. It's very fluid, it's always moving, and you gotta stay on top of things. And I think our staff does that, and I think they do a nice job of mixing with our volunteers, our volunteer networks, or uh, state, chap uh, state chapter uh, uh, chairpersons. And, um, but we have to continue to do that, uh, drive for more members, 
um, I, you know, I think we could have 15, 20,000 members eventually. And um, there's certainly a lot of folks out there that still have not heard of backcountry hunters and anglers. And so I think that's something that we would like to work on and improve. And that's going to benefit us as an organization. But most importantly, it benefits the land and the water, uh, the fish and wildlife, and our kids.